last time on Flipside. Not my best friend. That's the verdict. Ah, oh, it's hard suck! Why the yep. f*** are we leaving? Did you want to do the streets? This is Flipside, the show that takes you behind the scenes with the Absinthe Films crew to see what it took to make the snowboard film optimistic. Benny actually is, he's been stepping it up. I mean, when we went to Buffalo, I'd say Benny got the most shots of anyone. In the past, sometimes it was more of just trying to get him to go. This trip in particular, he's banging him off. You find crews going to the same spots every year, like Quebec and Montreal. It's cool to change it up and hit things that not everyone's gonna see in every movie. We actually go into Manhattan. On the East Coast, there's so many places you could go. There's something cool about going to Harlem and going to the Bronx where for most people it's a nightmare to go there. But in reality, people there are cool and respectful. And especially when they see someone snowboarding, seeing a guy launch down a kink rail and slide it on a snowboard is completely ridiculous for those people. Like, I can't even imagine what's going on in their mind, just thinking like A, what an idiot, like B, that's pretty crazy, and C, that's kind of cool. Probably one of the best and productive trips we went on all year. How you feeling, Benny? I think he got most of his shots on that trip for his whole part, and then he ended up going to Russia, so. New we'll York see. City shots. We'll see how it looks when the editing time comes around. Yeah, this is a mission today. We go to the Russian ambassade in, uh, in Geneva. I always wanted to go to Russia because I think they have some of the sickest mountain chains there. It's kind of hard to get, uh, you get an invitation letter from somebody in Russia and it's really limited. You can go for like two weeks tourist. <laughs> you don't decide to go to Russia and the next day you leave. Like it took us almost 10 days to, uh, to get all the paperwork. On a le visa, putain! Putain! C'est vraiment un We got it! During my season, I kind of had moments here and there where I was like, why am I doing this anymore? You know, like, it was still no winter in Europe. Not really snowboarding weather. I think it's really important as a snowboard pro that when the time is there that you don't have fun anymore. You should just go home and do something else. That's kind of like at some point where I was. My girlfriend, she had one week of vacation coming up. I was definitely gonna spend it with her. Next thing I knew, I was in Morocco. With Europe still not having any snow, Wally came over for the second time, we had plans to meet up in Vancouver to move on to Whistler. If you go to Whistler, you pretty much need your own whole setup. You need a truck, you need a trailer. You had to find like a huge truck which was able to tow all our gear. It was quite a challenge. Can't find one. After looking for a while around Vancouver, we found ourselves the biggest truck. Living the American dream in Canada. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, Whistler is always a huge mission. I haven't been there in five years. Once we got to Whistler, I remember clearly why I didn't go back to Whistler for five years. Oh, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it usually jumps in, begins. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
hate those ski boots. Let's put it up on the truck without starting it, man. Go to that jump, catch some air. I feel good now. Yeah. Any claiming tomorrow? No claiming. I don't claim. Claiming will get you. The lesson we learned last year. <laughs> there will be no sequel. Go, go break a trail of that little tree kicker. Catch some sky, do some maneuvers. Lance, me. go away, go home. I just claimed. <laughs> Those days, they all blend into one day. It was like all one big gray soup throughout the entire three weeks we were there. I think this is cool. But I can't believe it's getting sunny. We're supposed to puke all day. On our bad weather jump. Holy. Go up there? Before and I probably shared with Ole the most this year out of anyone. And a sick rider and always doing cool, unique Euro stuff. It stokes me up. We're back in the world. <laughs> yeah, do some crisper flavors to power your stoke. It's my favorite one right there. <laughs> Chance. So Kurt showed up, I think it was sometime in February. Yeah, this place is really cool though. I was just going crazy at rice and powder. <laughs> you guys were scared to go? Or? No, we just figured we'd go together. Yeah, you guys were scared to go. <laughs> we got him coming out with Roman. Those guys hadn't filmed together much and wasn't sure like how the dynamic was going to be between those two guys. So we going up here? I'm over that zone. We're stoked on it. You're watching Flipside, the making of the snowboard film Optimistic. Well, it's a jump today. A little bit. Um, we're seeing we can split in two groups. Those guys do that. And we'll That's too much Kurt coming out with Roman. They started off spreading out and then we try to communicate with each other, like who's ready and who's not ready. Why is spreading over? That's too much space in your room. That's too much silence in your head. Speech left thoughts and dead ideas. We got those guys to work together a bit, and after the first day or two, they were helping each other build jumps. There's too much silence in your head. Some of the features where you just couldn't have two guys sessioning it at the same time, they would just help each other out. That was really cool to see. Would you stand there for a second so I can focus? Push that one. Show me that the other day, and I was like, Dad, I don't want to do it. So I show it to you, and... It reminded me of Super Mario Brothers, trying to just knock off pillows way up high in trees. It's more about planning your escape, because the, the landings are so tight. There's something to be said about getting to a place like the East Coast, like Denver, where we actually got to chill out for a few weeks. If we weren't there that long, we wouldn't have discovered the things we did. At that point, though, it just felt like the winter was going by. We'd been in the urban world for two months plus, hadn't even been in the mountains, really. It was still just kind of whatever in Utah, but there was a few days of powder. Utah's powder season was probably like eight days total this year. Moving from the East Coast to the West Coast was something that for me was huge because you know, you grow up around a city, you want to go to the mountains. And it's weird to have the years go by and then all of a sudden you spend the, the mountain season in the city. Yeah, you see? <laughs> Mike Stryker, nice to meet you. Tomorrow's gonna be bluebird. Tiny little bit of powder on top of it. Oh my god, I think there's tons of powder. Okay, everybody's waiting. For who? For you. Now for you. 
Yeah, they are waiting for me, but since I'm waiting for you. Look, look outside, man. Tenth day in a row, it's 20 meters of snow out there now. Annie Boulanger, she was also one of the new riders this year. It's a really long sled ride and really bumpy. No. And I was wondering how that would go down, you know, having a girl in the crew. It's not a drag at all having her. She doesn't get stuck. I'd say a lot of guys get stuck more than she does. Sometimes this is such a nightmare. Like, everyone just wouldn't get stuck so much. It's, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link out there, so. How come you're not helping any? You got it covered. Even Beardy gets stuck every once in a while. My surprise, it was her on top of her game, the fastest. Wherever we went with her sled, she was like waiting on us. Good girl. Pretty much stuck in the wood. Tons of snow. Shreds and pillows. It's kind of good light now. That's Bluebird in Whistler. Policeman fight immigration In the nations of corruption yeah. Kill for the money and kill for your religion Hey, how what's my generation, you know? Just made a little like a snowboard shaped like a fish and Whistler was really good for that. I was stoked to be out on the sled and bring two boards, surf some Little lines if I was over, like stressing around too much with the sleds, searching for spots. Well, I tried to get the pill to front flip, but it didn't really work out for me. Better luck next time. I'm just really gonna work on it, practice it in the park, and uh, come back here and get that front flip out. Pill, pill, front flip. They would take the train from my place all the way to Zurich. No. First bad news in the plan. plan. <laughs> Take the plane to Moscow, then from Moscow we gotta take the plane to Sochi, which is south. Sochi. 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 I got home from Morocco, next day I boarded a plane to Vancouver. After Nicholas arrived, Roman left, everybody cleared out, and then it was just Nicholas and Kurt. It was really a turning point in my focus, because I knew I wanted to make sure that I got Nicholas on some of the terrain that he was there to ride. Little mini track guy, that looks pretty cool. Nicholas made it really clear to me that he's not interested in snowmobiling at all. It's not what he wanted his season to be about. He wanted to do a bunch of resort filming. Loved doing that. Wanted to do a bunch of hiking. Just not going over a bunch of whoops with a snowmobile like we had been up to that point. We hiked, we rode the resort. Just, yeah, it felt good. he left. He had to go down to L.A. for a meeting. Of course, the day that we left was the first bluebird day there. <laughs> the thing about Whistler is it's beautiful and abundant. But you gotta get there first. I was quickly reminded of how it can be in Whistler. Two sleds down. Damn man. Well, we pretty much went through a stretch of like every time we went out, a sled broke down or it just wasn't making it back. I couldn't even believe it. Aside from the sled problems we had that day, 
we still manage to pull off some shots. Riding with another girl, I don't think it's a big difference. You, you look for your own things anyway. Annie knows what she wants to do and no trouble at all going out and doing stuff. Mark started talking about what he wanted in his part. He's always wanted riding shots where he's spraying skiers. Fly to Colorado to get some tourist slashes. We went to Colorado strictly for dumping. We got three tickets. Some dumping 101. Oh, oh. I like keeping the dream alive where skiers just hate snowboarders. <laughs> I love that. I do my part to keep snowboarding real and keep it off that mainstream thing where after the Olympics, it's all accepted now and everything, and all the parents are like, pushing their kids into it, trying to get them trainers and all that sorry that happens once it's in the Olympics. You know, I don't want it to turn into some jock mainstream sorry ass sport. So should we wait and see? Yeah, what should we do? Be even like Juno? A lot of bad weather in Juno. Yeah. But there's a ski area there. Yeah, yeah maybe we should start looking for tickets up there. It's raining. Email from Justin. Not panicking. Up, but checking interest levels. Rain to the top in Whistler and Nelson. Global warming could have a big effect on AK. You're watching Flipside, the making of the snowboard film Optimistic. Rain's the worst, huh? You think, like, it could snow so hard right now? It would just be dumping. <laughs> dumping, man. We just would be so stoked. How much can we sit around Whistler and not get anything done? And drive those <laughs> sleds up now. Up to Alaska. But everything is <laughs> just get those sleds up now. For me, it's the only thing I have to go home for the for the wangle, you know? Yeah, but what's the difference if you fly home from AK or I fly home from here? Yeah, it's just the money. We have landed. Juno International Airport. We are in winter. Kurt had gone home to propose to Jess to marry him, so he was just like, okay, I gotta go home. You guys go to Juno, I'll meet up with you in a few days. I just dropped in, did it really quick, and was out. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I had to do some meetings with my sponsors. The crew totally switched, say, okay, we go to Juno, it's gonna be sick. I was like, yeah, Juno, it's, it's low, you know, it's no snow. If those guys say it's good there, so it's good there. I went there and I was like, whoa, I think we hit the right spot. Did you already buy it? <laughs> <laughs> Buyer's remorse. <laughs> That's my car. People at EcoCrest were really accommodating. They hooked us all up with season passes. They're just like, what do you need? How you do with the island? Ice too. Ice. <laughs> I didn't know it was cross -eyed. The way it was, they were having a banner year. It was the highest level of ski accessible snow on Earth. They had 224 inches. We definitely were feeling it. One of my goals for this season was to ride and, and shoot some stuff in the resorts. We filmed a bunch of stuff in Eagle Crest. For a few days, we just took around with the locals. 
They showed us their favorite runs. I know a good place to have a drink, to light one up and feel the beat. There were so many good snow days. It was like a dream come true almost for the season. I've never seen you with such a big beard. Hey, I'm <laughs> growing until the baby's born. Good? So, so? We were out there just filming when it was snowing. As long as the snow's good, that's all we really need. As long as you have visibility so the rider can see and you can see the rider, that's all you need, especially given the amounts of powder that we were finding. I'm going to do the blaster. You can do the blaster. Next on Flipside. This is where I leave you, huh? Are we halfway there? As long as I see running water around here, I'm being rope. Now this guy gotta throw one down. I talked to Rusty. He said he's gonna fly straight to Hanks. You know where Josh is? 